Sing to God. Sing praises to his name. Lift up a song to him who rides upon the clouds. His name is the Lord. Be exultant before him. Father of orphans and protector of widows is God in his holy habitation. God gives the desolate a home to live in. He leads the prisoners to prosperity. It's joyous. It's beautiful. And as I read this happy, happy text, all I could hear in my head were the words of Amos, the fifth chapter. Alas for you who desire the day of the Lord. Why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light. As if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear, or went into the house and rested his hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and your grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings of your well-fatted animals, I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Both of these passages are talking about God's arrival, if you will, on the scene in the life of Israel. But they seem a little different, don't they? Imagine them set to music. With apologies to Dan Shutt, who's Song I'm basically stealing here. Sing to God, sing praise to his name. Lift a song to him who rides the clouds. Sing to God, sing praise to his name. Singing Alleluia. Father of orphans, protector of widows, he leads the prisoners home. Taking his people all through the desert and giving them a land sing to god sing praise to his name lift a song to him who rides the clouds sing to god sing praise to his name sing alleluia but imagine the next passage from amos in a song with apologies to me, because this is one of my tunes. It's as if you ran, you ran from a lion. It's as if you ran and only met a bear. It's as if you found a house to escape to. Leaned against the wall and found a snake there. Why do you desire the day of the Lord? Tell me, why do you desire the day of the Lord? Oh, why do you desire the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light. Penny for the old guy, not my style. Not another cent for a toothless smile. Gotta keep my pace, got another mile. Penny for the old guy, not my style. Penny for the old guy, not my gig. Gotta stand tall, gotta stand and live. Gave at the office another give. Penny for the old guy, not my gig. Penny for the church, now that's all right. Penny keep the church out of my life. Look the other way, look to the sky. Penny for the church, now that's all right. Penny for the old guy, not my style. Not another cent for a toothless smile. Gotta keep my pace, got another mile. Penny for the old guy, not my style. Far on the mountain, far on the valley, far on the ocean, on every side. 
turn your brother to turn a prophet How shall I now heed your sister's cry Why do you desire the day of the Lord? Tell me why do you desire the day of the Lord? Oh, why do you desire the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light Slightly different messages, huh? But here's the thing about these two very different pictures. Both pictures are steeped in Scripture and worship. Picture number one, our lesson for today, it's a psalm, a song, and definitely it was sung in worship. It talks about how grand God is riding on the clouds, truly the master of the universe. But it goes on to talk about how God's greatest work, it's the saving of the lowly, the orphan, and the widow. And here's the thing, this song, sung by the people of Israel, it's saying that there was this one time, this one time when the orphan and the widow were them. They were the orphans and the widows and the prisoners, and God led them, as the psalm tells us, out of Egypt through the wilderness and to a land they could call home. But by the time of Amos, they had created in their own society picture number two. They had created a class system, complete with a downtrodden class, a shunned Cast. They had created among their own people, their own family, a subset of orphans and widows and poor men struggling to get by, and God wasn't having it. Even as no expense was spared in the worship of God. Worship God, keep the deal going, keep the Lord happy, and God will protect. And then you can do your business dealings, acquire all you can, go your own way. Penny to the church to keep the church turned away. Penny to the church to keep the church in its place so you can live however. And to this Amos says, why do you desire the day of the Lord? It is darkness not light. Why am I going on here? Hey, Mike, look, it's a happy lesson. It's summer. It's warm. It's fuzzy. It's telling you about the glory of the Exodus, God saving God's people. All it's missing is a rainbow and a couple of unicorns. Why go to the dark of Amos 5? Because that's where Israel went. That is the road they chose, the road that they would not turn from, and God responded. And they came crashing down, and they were carried off into a foreign land. What brings the end to an empire? The direct action of God or the rules that God has put in place that say once the injustice becomes too great, once the infection within becomes too damaging, a fall must occur. What brings the end? Does it matter? These happy words of a psalm, probably sung during David's reign, the birth of the empire of Israel, would fade. They would fade as injustice, harshness, poverty, just became commonplace in life. They would fade as that empire would crumble. So what does it say to us? Well, first off, I'm, I'm not a prophet. I'm a pastor. Someone like Amos, God talked to him and said, hey, you leave the southern kingdom of Israel, you go up to the northern kingdom, and you talk to them. So Amos went up and he said his words and he got to go home. Well, pastors don't do that. This is home. We struggle with you, together with you, side by side, together in community, if we're any good at what we do. But I don't want to be standing before God one day I don't want to be standing there and hearing the words, why didn't you say something? Why didn't you point out the other side of things in my holy word? I don't want to go there. 
My job is to point and say, make sure you're seeing this. Make sure I'm seeing this. Make sure we're all paying attention so that each of us has the opportunity to look at situations, to search our hearts, and decide when and if something needs to be done. As for me, I sent a donation to Lutheran Immigration Services with the writing of this sermon. That is not enough. That's not going to solve all the injustice in the world. But it's something. It's a start. Because I want the day of the Lord to be a day of light for you and for me and for our children. And though I know we will all be gathered to Christ in the end, there is no promise that it's going to be sunshine and unicorns on the road there especially if we don't gather those in need around us, as Christ in the end will gather us. I want to sing the joyous song to God. And though I know it can never be completely true, I'd like to deserve to sing the song. I guess that's my confession for the day. Thanks for hearing it.